Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number four, and now we're going to move in and have a look at uh, point mutations. So what we need to do in this particular video is to compare some causes, processes, and effects of different types of mutation, uh, including but not limited to point mutation. You need to make sure you know what point mutations are and to explain their cause, and to also evaluate some of the impacts of point mutations. And so we'll have a little bit of a look at that in this video. So I'm... Um, going to, I guess, make a slight modification as we look at this. I'm going to uh, interpret point mutations slightly differently to genic mutations, although I think that the way that the syllabus does this, they're used uh, interchangeably. So as far as I'm concerned, genic mutations are mutations that occur when uh, within a single gene. So what we're, lo what we're looking at is something that changes within a stretch of DNA that codes for a particular protein. Now, if we regard genic mutations in relation to genes, and that will also be a useful way of talking about it when we talk about the next type of mutations uh, in the next video, then we can talk about two particular types of genic mutations, uh, which are point mutations and what we've called frame shift. Now, the cause of each of these is a single change to a um, nucleotide base. Now, what that means is that there are a couple of different consequences associated with changes, and we'll look at each of these different types, and hopefully you'll see that they can be regarded as point mutations as a change in one particular place, but the consequences of those changes can be a little bit different depending on um, how that change occurs. So the key thing is that a point mutation is a change in a single base or nucleotide uh, of a gene. So when we're looking at our um, DNA code, our sequence of bases, uh, usually you will see something where you might have a range of C's and then G's and then T's, for example. And then at some point along here, um, something changes. Okay. So everything else um, is the same, but at one certain point, we've had a change, uh, a G changing to a C, for example. So this might be what we call the normal, and this might be our uh, mutant, a mutation. Okay, and so in this case, a, a G has been changed to a C. So this would be an example of a point mutation. And there's a couple of different types uh, of these sorts of mutations. And most of the time when we're talking about point mutations, we're talking about a base substitution. So a G being changed into a C or an A or a T or any, any of the other four, three being changed into any of the, any of the opposite three. So, uh, or opposite four for that matter. So it's one of these things that um, you can have a look at and the type of change is going to have varying different effects uh, on what is actually happening in the DNA and more specifically what is happening to the protein. So if we're talking about point mutations, so now I'm talking about these um, base substitutions. So specifically what we're talking about here is a base substitution. And you'll see later on why I'm, I'm trying to be really specific about this. So uh, what we do is we compare these to our control group. And so uh, good scientists always have a control group or a control or something that we can compare against. So here's our first um, a normal piece of DNA. And at the DNA level, we have these uh, three bases, T, T, C. And then so when we look at uh, how T, T, C uh, is transcribed into the messenger RNA, then we see an A, A, G. If we then go to the translation at the transfer RNA, we find that this codes for lysine. Uh, LYS is the amino acid, so this is the particular amino acid that comes in here. Now we know that the, that the DNA code has a little bit of built-in redundancy and because there are 64 combinations, so four in the first position multiplied by four in the second position, T-A-G-C, and four in the third position, we get four times four times four, which is 64. So we've got 64 different combinations um, of bases, but these 64 combos are only coding for 20 amino acids. So that means there is inbuilt redundancy in the system, which means that if we make a change to the end and the 
change on the end makes the DNA go from TTC to TTT, then when the messenger RNA uh, transcribes that, we get an AAA, but at the ribosome, the same amino acid uh, is added in. So this is what we call a silent mutation, a mutation which we don't even know is there because the change that's occurred in the DNA has produced the same amino acid on the a polypeptide chain. So nothing's changed. So we don't even know there was a mutation there in the first place. And these ones are called silent mutations. If the change, however, occurs on the first, so the base substitution occurs for the first T, and that gets changed to an A, what you now have is uh, a stop codon. This is a big problem because wherever this occurs in the production of the polypeptide, that amino acid chain is going to stop right at that place. Now, that's probably likely to result in a non-functioning or certainly not properly functioning uh, protein or polypeptide. So this is a problem, and we call this a nonsense uh, mutation because it produces something that that means you get nothing at all. Um, so the, the amino acid chain is going to grow, it's going to reach this stop point, this artificial stop point, and that's going to be the end of it. We're not going to get anything more after that point. So any additional um, uh, coding for any additional amino acids beyond the point of this mutation are just going to be ignored. The other type of uh, point mutation is called a missense, and this basically means that you uh, the change that occurs or the mutation that occurs, and you can see a couple of examples here, are um, producing a different amino acid. So we don't have a stop code, but now what we have is just one incorrect amino acid. Now, one incorrect amino acid in the polypeptide chain can seriously affect the function of the protein. And in fact, there's some nice examples which we'll look at later on of just that one incorrect amino acid in the chain affecting the function of the protein. Um, this, there's a couple of um, subgroups of missense to conservative and non-conservative, and that's really to do with the type of bonding that occurs um, that, um, as a result of the different types of amino acids. And I don't think we probably need to get into that in too much detail. It's just um, put there, I guess, for you to just have a little bit of a look at. The second type of genic mutation, which I, I, I don't necessarily like calling this a point mutation, but I suppose um, in a sense it is, because it's still a change in one base. But the difference now is that we get uh, the change as a result of addition or deletion. So this is a different um, kind of a problem because since our DNA reads in um, groups of three, if I have nine um, bases all lined up in a row and then I remove one of these bases, then my three here, two here is going to take one from the next one. So then there's only going to be two here. And you can see what's going to happen is I'm going to move the whole code is going to be shunted out. So my first one's going to read OK. It's going to be the same three uh, letters. And so therefore, it's going to code for the same um, amino acid. But after that, I'm going to have a problem. And likewise, if I add an extra one in here, I'm going to have the new one plus two of these ones. And then one of these ones is going to go into the next one. So I'm going to have two of these ones and so on. So you can see this is why we call it a frame shift, because the whole of the frame is shifting forwards or backwards. When you do your A, 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 G, 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 C, 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 and we kind of break this down every third one. If I was to delete one, A, 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 G, G, C, 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 you can see not only have I changed that one where, for example, I might have removed one of these little um, G bases, but anything that's further on here, so the next one's T, 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 this is going to be C, C, T, and so on, T, T, and whatever is, is here. This is why we call it a frame shift, because from the point that you make the change, everything after that um, is going to be uh, out of sync. The, the, the three bases is going to be out of sync. That means your DNA sequence is going to become just slightly longer if it's an addition, or just slightly shorter if uh, it's a deletion. And it means everything after it will be misread. So these are much more significant mutations. They have much more significant 
um, consequences because they've changed all of the DNA sequence um, in terms of how it's read by messenger RNA and therefore the whole messenger RNA sequence is going to be wrong and so therefore the whole of the amino acids uh, chain is also going to be wrong. So just a, an example to sort of show you what's going on here and how when we work through these you see before we, we could have a stop signal, we could have the same amino acid or we could have a different amino acid, but we were only affecting one part of the gene. Now the whole lot gets changed. So when you're looking at the whole sequence, you can see the changes that are occurring are very significant changes just because we've shifted the frame. And that's why these are called frame shifts. We've moved it forwards one or backwards one, depending on whether we've got an addition or a deletion. I mentioned before that um, there's some significant um, conditions associated with some of these very simple changes or mutations in the DNA code. Cystic, fibro cystic fibrosis, I'm sorry, is caused by a deletion. So an amino acid, phenylalanine, um, is lost from the sequence, and this causes the protein to fold incorrectly. Um, the deletion is not a frame shift because three bases next to each other are deleted. So uh, whilst this is a deletion, you would expect a frame shift. If you delete three, then all you're doing is just removing one, uh, the code for one amino acid. So the whole rest of the amino acid chain is made except for that one phenylalanine. So that one amino acid, which is supposed to appear somewhere, isn't there. And that, um, and that simple change uh, can affect the way that the protein works and therefore uh, leads to a condition like cystic fibrosis. We're also going to have a look at uh, sickle cell anemia in a little bit more detail. Um, this is a really interesting one that's being studied both in terms of biotechnology and also as an example of natural selection where a um, disease can actually be favoured under certain circumstances and, and uh, sickle cell anemia is associated in terms of its um, occurrence or incidence with um, malaria, with uh, places where malaria is more common. So these two things kind of tend to feed into each other. It's a recessive disorder caused by a single substitution in the gene that creates hemoglobin. So just a slight change in the way that the hemoglobin is made can cause this condition of sickle cell anemia. And colour blindness is another example. So we want you to have a look at a few different examples in class to give yourself a little bit of an idea about um, the consequences of these types of changes. But the key thing about uh, these types of changes, genic mutations only affect a single gene and therefore they only affect the production of a single uh, polypeptide chain or, or amino acid chain. And depending on whether we're just changing one base into another or whether we're adding or deleting a base will affect how much of that amino acid chain is affected. Uh, definitely worth having a little bit of a look at a few examples. Um, cystic fibrosis, as I say, is a great example. Uh, and having these examples that you can write about in your exams is critically important. Thanks for watching.